been subscribed for a while and know me best as a gardening YouTuber, but I am also a soap maker and I grow a lot of different plants that I use in skincare and in soap. And occasionally I share how to use them here on YouTube. And I have quite a few videos that you can go back and check out. In fact, an entire playlist of things that you can make at home. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how you can use all natural ingredients, including essential oil and various oils and butters to create your own farmhouse, simple, hot process soap. I will spare you having to measure all of the ingredients, but I'll go through them as well. Just note that I am using the digital kitchen scale and that should be 40 grams of mango butter in the pan. So in the, the pan I've got the mango butter, I also have refined coconut oil. These are two of the base oils. And then in the back here, I have a jug filled with extra virgin olive oil and a bit of castor oil at the bottom. So together, these are the main oils. To make the lye solution, we have some sodium hydroxide there. So this is lye and you have to be very careful about using this and especially when you're mixing it together with the distilled water, which is just in this jug. And the type of sodium hydroxide that I use is food grade and that's the best for making soap because it is pure. It doesn't have any metals in it, which you might find in other types of lye. I also have another small ramekin of mango butter. So I've set this aside to add at the end of trace as a super fat. And then at the very end of the cook, we'll be adding a bit of Greek yogurt and also essential oil. And this is four teaspoons of grapefruit essential oil, which is 16 grams. The first step in making soap from scratch is making the lye solution. So I have gloves on, you can use washing up gloves. These are vinyl gloves in case you're allergic to latex, which you can also use. I also have eye protection and I will have marks on my face probably for the rest of this. So pop these on. So I have my lye crystals here and lye comes either in a granular form or in pellets like this and I find that this stuff doesn't dissolve as easily as the granular stuff. So we're gonna stir in a ventilated place. I'm here by the window but you can work under a kitchen hood or outdoors is actually even better. And I'm going to pour this into the distilled water, so the sodium hydroxide, while I'm stirring and then stir it together. I'm gonna to keep away from it as well because there's gonna be some steam coming off of it and it is not pleasant to breathe in, but hopefully the majority of it goes out the window here and then pour some more in. So I'm just gonna keep stirring this. It looks pretty well dissolved. There's steam coming off of it, I can see. I might even pop it up here closer to the window. Right, this looks pretty well dissolved. I have a bowl here filled with just some ordinary tap water and I'm just going to now set this inside and that will help it to cool down a little bit. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is put the pan of solid oils on the hob, get that all melted and then return it back to my station with a crock pot. The solid oils are melted now and the slow cooker I've had on so it's quite warm on the inside as well. Take the lid off and just pour these oils in. And one of these silicon spatulas comes in really handy because it helps get all the oil out. And it does like to stick. And next, I'm gonna just stir the olive oil and the castor oil together because the castor oil, although there's just a little bit in there, it is very sticky and it will stick to the jug, but stirring it up helps to combine it. 
And then we're gonna pour that in as well. The extra virgin olive oil in this recipe creates a kind of a, a yellow, greenish color to the final bars, a lot more yellowy, and it contributes to that final tan color. Get every last drop out. All right, stir that, looking golden and lush. And this is where the digital th thermometer comes in really handy. So I'm just gonna take a reading. And it's 105 Fahrenheit, which is perfect. And let's check the temperature of the live solution. It's quite a bit warmer. So I'm going to stir this and we're trying to get the lye solution and the oils to be within 10 degrees of one another. And while these are getting slightly warmer in the slow cooker, I'll stir this and try to bring the temperature down. While I'm waiting for the lye solution to cool, I've emptied the ramekin filled with the mango butter, so this is the super fat, into the warm pan and the residual heat from the pan will melt it to liquid by the time I need it. But if you're concerned, maybe put the heat on very low, but just really only for a minute or two, and then just let it melt. The mango butter is melting pretty quickly now, and we're at the right temperature range for the next step. So the oils are 111 degrees, and then the lye solution is 113, so pretty spot on. Next, we're gonna take our sieve and we're going to carefully just strain the lye solution into the oils here. If you want to reduce the chance of air bubbles and things happening in your soap, then you can put your stick blender in and pour it against that, but it's not really a big deal. It's, it's more of a, an aesthetic thing. So let's pour the, put these aside because now it's time to stick blend. So what we're gonna do first is put the stick blender in or immersion blender, whatever you prefer, at an angle because there, there will be air inside the head and we don't want excess bubbles and we don't want this solution or the soap batter kicking up and splattering on us. So we're going to put it in at an angle and then we're going to just stir the contents together. And you can see that it has changed color whereas the oil was really clear initially it's going a little bit more opaque and it's going to go opaque even more in a second. So I think that is really well stirred together. I'm gonna bring the stick blender into the center and I tend to hold it down to the bottom of the container, especially for smaller batches like this, and then just pulse. And you can start to see it go pretty opaque and that's it emulsifying. And we're going to continue stirring and pulsing until the soap batter comes to a trace. And what that means is that it starts to thicken up and emulsify. And when you lift the stick blender up out of the, the soap batter, it will leave kind of a trail on the surface at a very light trace and it will get quite thick like pudding when you get to a medium or even thicker trace. And that's what we're aiming for. So we're gonna to try to get to a light to medium trace before we go to the next step. Yeah, that's good. It's a really nice medium trace here. I'm just going to scrape off any excess soap batter. And then we're gonna go get the mango butter and stir it in. 
mango butter is nice and melted here. And so what's happened is that the base oils in the lye solution have emulsified and have started the saponification process. So it's turning into soap right now. And this excess mango butter is the oil that we want as our super fat. And we're just gonna pour it in now. So we pour it in now in the hopes that it stays in the soap as free floating conditioning oil and doesn't turn into soap. And we compensate the soap recipe to account for a bit of extra oil just so that the soap isn't harsh on our skin. So we're gonna just gently fold that in. This is an optional step. You don't have to add the oil in at this point. You can add it all in together with the base oils if you wish. But I'd like to make a nice mango butter super fatted batch of soap. And if you do put it all in together, then your super fat is going to be a combination of all the oils you use, not just the mango butter. But it looks pretty well mixed in now. So what I'm going to do is try to scrape as much of the soap off the sides as possible. And then we're gonna let this cook. And letting it cook basically pushes the saponification even faster. So we don't have to have a really long cure time after we're finished molding it. I think that looks pretty good. So next, pop the lid on, turn the heat down to low, and we're gonna let this sit for 30 minutes and try not to be impatient, just leave the lid on because you want the moisture, the water to stay inside. And we're gonna look for this opaque soap batter to start bubbling up around the edges and turning a much more glossy kind of Vaseline type texture. It's been 30 minutes, but the soap isn't finished yet. You can see the center is that opaque color and it needs to turn into the more glossy, Vaseline-y looking texture that's on the outside there. And my slow cooker is hotter in the back than it is in the front, so I've swapped it around. You can see there's a lot more in the front there that has saponified. So I've put the timer on for another 15 minutes and hopefully it'll be finished by then. Ah, uh, this is a lot more like it. I've not stirred the soap at all. It's just been bubbling in here, warming, and now I'm gonna take the lid off. There's that steam. And I'll set this up here. And now I'm just gonna stir this all together. It's very Vaseline-y at this point in texture. Properly cooked. I'm not gonna go through the pH testing of it right now, and that, but that's something that you can do to ensure that the soap is fully cooked. So what that involves is taking a little bit of soap, dissolving it in water and putting a little P, pH strip in it but your pH of soap should be about an eight to a 10. That's pretty normal. Okay, this is very hot and I'm not going to put it in the mold just yet because it needs to cool down. It needs to cool down to below 180 degrees Fahrenheit before I can put in the yogurt and the essential oil. Otherwise, if you put the essential oil in now, you'll see it basically evaporate before your eyes. So I'm going to take this part out of the slow cooker and then just let the soap cool. It's looking pretty good. Let's take the temperature. 171 Fahrenheit. 
I've let it cool for, I guess, about 15, 20 minutes. And now it's time to add the fragrance, which is grapefruit essential oil and the Greek yogurt. And yogurt, just a little bit of it, works like sodium lactate, so it helps to harden up the bars, adds a creaminess to the bars as well. So let's start by putting that in and get it really mixed together. Put it just there in the center and let's whip it in. It does have a tendency to stay in chunks, so you really do need to mix it in very well. It's already a lighter color from that. And I'm not scraping the sides as much because wherever the soap has gotten a little bit too crusty on the edges, it will stay crusty. So if you blend that into your soap, you're gonna have little crusty bits. So just gently going around the sides. That's looking pretty well mixed in. So now the essential oil. And the reason why we waited for the soap to cool is specifically for the essential oil. We don't want the essential oil to evaporate off. And I've seen it happen before. You add the essential oil too early when the soap is still too hot and poof, the fragrance is all gone. Let's get this really well mixed in there. Well mixed, but gentle stirring. I've got the soap moved off to the side and now it's time to put it in the mold. This is a mold that I've had probably about 10 years and I don't think they make this particular model anymore, but it is size, the loaf size inside is eight inches by two and a half by three and a half inches. And this fits this recipe pretty much exactly. So it's about 800 grams worth of base oils or 28 ounces. And this is an old broken spoon, which is perfect for scooping the soap out. So nothing fancy, you just scoop the soap out and plop it in. And try to avoid any soap bubbles in there, or not soap bubbles, but air bubbles. And the way that you can avoid having them in is, is by settling the mold like that, just against the table. So the soap is all in the mold now. I'm just gonna settle it. And then you can smooth and, and I guess flatten this, the tops of it with your hands, wearing gloves of course. And it will be a bit of a rustic texture on the top that's totally to be expected with hot process soap. And it is still a little bit molten now and it's gonna take several hours, if not a full day to completely cool down and harden. So leave this overnight or come back to it at the same time the next day for the next step. I made a batch of this soap yesterday and so it's all ready to go. It's solidified in the mold and getting it out of the mold is really just quite easy. Now when it comes to cutting handmade soap, you can use fancy soap cutters, you can use pastry cutters, or you can use an ordinary stainless steel kitchen knife. And also you can handle the soap with your bare hands technically, but if you wear gloves, you'll avoid getting fingerprints on them. And that's something that you wanna think about if you're gonna be giving this as gifts. I cut my loaf up into nine bars and I'm really pleased with how they look. They're a lovely light brown color. They have that rustic top, that textured top that's characteristic of hot process soap, smooth insides, and they smell incredible. It's, it's a combination of that yogurt and the essential oil. I use grapefruit essential oil, but you can use many others as well. 
but you do have to be careful with how much you use and there are rules on essential oils and fragrance oils for that matter just to make them skin safe and so if you'd like to use a different essential oil go over to my website that's lovelygreens.com and I have a guide on how much essential oil to use in making handmade soap. Now this process of making soap is hot process and from today it, I can technically use this soap. Saponification is complete but it does really benefit from curing for one to two weeks and what that means is that you find a place in your home that's out of direct sunlight, that's airy, that's out of reach of children and pets put down a piece of parchment paper, uh, greaseproof paper, baking paper, anything like that, just to protect the surface, and then space your bars out so that they've got plenty of air circulation around each bar. And then leave them there for one to two weeks, and that will allow all the excess water that we've used in the recipe, or the vast majority of it, to evaporate out. And what that does is create a harder bar that will last longer once you start using it. Now, on the other hand, cold process soap takes a lot longer because once you pour it into the mold, it's still saponifying. So it still needs quite a bit more time to complete that process. And that's why cold process soap make, takes four to six weeks for it to be complete. If you're interested in making cold process soap, I have a few videos here on YouTube for you to check out, including the carrot soap recipe that I did earlier this year. And also I have tons and tons of recipes and instructions and ideas on my website. And I'll leave a link to my website down below. Hot process soap is a pretty easy way to make soap from scratch. And you combine the same types of ingredients. In fact, you can use the exact same recipes as you would for cold process soap. Although you cook it, so you push the saponification so it speeds things up. And so by the end of the process, it's safe to use and it's a lot safer to put into the mold and to handle afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this video and it has been helpful in showing you how you can make your own soap from scratch at home. If you've got any questions whatsoever, leave them as a comment down below. And if you've got any questions about cold process as well, pop them down there as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for another video here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now. One last thing before you go, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to Lovely Greens and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications for when new videos are out.